Hey everyone, welcome to this video tutorial as we are going to evaluate crime prevention strategies. So why is AO3 important? Checking out the mark scheme for the top band, it is useful to note exactly what you need to be doing to get right up there. You need analysis and evaluation that will be explicit and relevant. Evaluation may be developed, for example, by locating the discussion within a debate between perspectives and analysis will show clear explanation. So to help you make notes, I've made this handout, so download it and this will enable you to fill it along to identify some of the key points. There are three main crime prevention strategies. We've got situational crime prevention, environmental crime prevention. They are both supported by right realists and social and community crime prevention, which comes from the left. So let's look at each one in turn and evaluate them as we go along. So our first one is situational crime prevention and Ron Clark defines this as a preemptive approach. So something that happens before something else that relies not on improving society or its institutions like left realist, but simply by reducing the opportunities for crime. And according to Clark's rational choice theory, it aims to manage or alter the immediate environment of the crime to increase the effort and risks of committing the crime, thus reducing the rewards. So our examples include target hardening measures such as locking doors and windows, fireproof letterboxes and increased CTV. So having that increased surveillance, including CCTV and security guards, increase the chances of shoplifters being caught. And the theory that underlies this is rational choice theory, the view that criminals weigh up the potential costs and benefits before deciding to commit a crime. They see that most crime is opportunistic. So therefore, by reducing the opportunities, that will reduce the crime rate. So here's an example from Merseyside Police in 2019. It was called Operation Castle and um, it gives you a load of situational crime prevention examples and 25.7% decrease in home burglaries as well as 11.4% decrease in all other types of burglaries they found um, once they launched this strategy. Another example comes from Felson, his research into the Port Authority bus terminal in New York show it was poorly designed and provide loads of opportunities for deviancy. The toilets tended to be a setting for luggage theft, there was rough sleeping and there was also drug dealing. So what they did was they reshaped the physical environment and helped design out crime. So they replaced large sinks in which um, people were bathing in and the homeless and stuff like that. So it just moved it, moved it out. Now, the main evaluation point of this is that it causes this thing called displacement. So if criminals are asked in rationally, it'll just simply move to a softer target. So they found that when they did crack down in New York on the subway robberies, it just moved them to the streets above. As well as different locations, other types of displacement could be moving the crime to a different time. Um, it could even choose a different victim or even changing the crime itself. Our second evaluation is that it overemphasizes the opportunistic petty street crime and within this it ignores our white collar crime, corporate crime, green and state crimes which are often most costly and more harmful. It also assumes criminals make rational calculations, which often seems unlikely in the case of violence, crimes committed when on drunk, uh, drugs or drunk or even crimes of passion. It also ignores the root causes of crime like poverty. Um, so our left realists would disagree with this and you can debate between the left and right realism here. And also CCTV surveillance tend to target young males and for feminist CCTV is an extension of the male gaze. So bringing in other theories is really key in your evaluation. Moving on to our second crime prevention strategy, it's environmental. And this was based on Wilson and Kelling's broken window thesis. And according to Wilson and Kelling, broken windows signify the signs of disorder and lack of concern. So things like noise, graffiti, begging, begging um, littering, vandalism. And the argument is that leaving the windows broken sends out the signal that no one cares. So in these areas, there is a lack of formal social control, e.g. police, and a lack of informal social control, the, the wider community. So because the police are turning a blind eye, the community don't want to get involved either because they start to feel intimidated and powerless. So without tackling this crime in this situation, it deteriorates the area, it tips the area into a spiral of decline, the good people move out and the bad people move in. So this crime prevention strategy aims to tackle that and it does it through two things. 
So firstly, through um, environmental improvement strategies, so fix the broken windows immediately, scrub the graffiti, tow away burned cars, basically just fix the area, make it look like somebody cares. And secondly, zero tolerance policing, so basically nipping um, any signs of disorder in the bud and that prevents more serious crimes taking root. So another example comes from New York. It was called the Clean Car Program. And this is where the New York, New York subway cars um, were removed and if they had any graffiti on them. And in result, it virtually eradicated graffiti um, on those subway cars. So the main strength is that great success has been claimed for zero tolerance policing in New York. Um, Crime fell significantly, murders up to 50%. There were other programs tackling, um, such as fur dodging, drug dealing, begging um, by squeegee emergents, and that meant that within a three year period, crime fell significantly. But that um, can be counter evaluated because there might have been other factors that might have contributed to this falling crime rate. So at that same time, there was over 7,000 more police officers, more jobs were created in New York as well. So less people felt the need to commit crime. Crack cocaine was scarce. So people weren't motivated by drugs and there was improved medical emergency services. So some of these deaths which would have been murders, actually, um, people, um, you know, they didn't die, basically. Our final um, crime prevention strategy is social and community crime prevention. And this places the emphasis firmly on the potential offenders. And the aim is to remove the conditions that push individuals into crime in the first place. So this does come from um, our left realist. And the main causes of crime, according to them, is relative deprivation. As a result of this, they join other people who are in a similar situation. So they create subcultures and they are often marginalised within society as well. And what left realists um, argue is that by tackling these, this will reduce the crime rate. Now, these often are a longer term strategy um, aimed at tackling the root cause of offending rather than removing the opportunities because the causes are often rooted in social problems such as poverty, unemployment and poor housing. Um, these general social reform programmes addressing these um, issues have a crime prevention role, even if it is not their main focus. Sometimes it's often a byproduct. So, for example, trying to get people back into employment also reduces crime as a side effect. So as an example that you can apply is the Perry Police School Project. This was a community programme that was for disadvantaged black children in Michigan and it was aimed at reducing criminality. The experimental group of three or four year olds were offered a two year intellectual enrichment programme. Um, it included home visits and it was a longitudinal study. It followed the same um, students um, over um, the years to see their progress and there was massive differences were found between the control group who had not undergone the program and by the age of 40 they had fewer lifetime arrests for violent crime property crime and drugs most have gone um, on to um, graduate from high school most were in employment and it was calculated and here's your strength that for every dollar spent on the program 17 dollars was saved in welfare prison and other costs so this is a key advantage of this it aims to tackle the deep rooted causes of crime unlike our situational and environmental crime prevention strategy. The problem with this is that it was based on one small sample. Um, it was in one place, Michigan. Um, there was only 123 people within that sample. It was one ethnic group, black Americans, and it was based on the working lower class. So it may well not be uh, representative. Likewise, it overemphasized on those will, who will permit, um, p sorry, commit potentially stereotypical visible street crimes so it does nothing to tackle white collar corporate crime green crime which are arguably more costly and harmful to the human beings likewise these strategies are also a very much a long-term strategy and sometimes people don't like these strategies because they want to see quick clear results often within a, an election cycle so tackling crime they want to see an effect within one or two years Finally, some bonus evaluation. So they all tend to take for granted the nature and definition of crime. They focus on a narrow range of harms, which is violent crime, burglary, car crime, antisocial behaviour.
It also ignores crimes of the powerful. And this is where you can bring in all the theories such as Marxist to challenge these ideas and green crimes. And also the definition of crime problem reflects in the three strategies reflects the um, priorities and agencies asked to prevent crime. Put simply, the agencies being asked to be tough on crime reflect the priorities of the politicians. And when they are being tough on crime, they tend to be tough on street crime, um, rendering all the types of crime invisible. So as always, this video has covered an evaluation of crime prevention strategies to hit the AO3 evaluation. Use the handout to, to fill it in for a nice summary. And as always, massive thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.